Hey, what's going on, Guardians? My name is The Black Link, and today, or rather, tonight is September 13th, 2018, a Thursday. And you all know what that means. It's time for the Bungie Weekly Blog, This Week at Bungie. And it is the last one before the official drop of the Forsaken Raid, Last Wish in the Dreaming City. There's a lot of excitement going on around the community, and as you can probably guess, the lion's share of this week's TWAB is dedicated to the raid and the rewards that you'll be getting if you can manage to walk away with the world champ title of World's First. So let's go ahead and dive on into this week's TWAB and see what those raid rewards are going to entail. Now, of course, the raid goes live tomorrow, September 14th at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And as usual, Bungie will be watching fire teams the world over to see which one is going to be able to complete the raid first. And this time around, there's going to be some really interesting rewards tied to this. Here's what they had to say. Last week, we showed you a preview of the new raid World's First title belt. That's not the only thing we have lined up for the most hardcore raiders to immortalize their accomplishment. The World First team is also guaranteed to all receive the 1000 Voices Exotic, which is a rare drop from the final encounter. Now, this on its own is huge news. Basically, the fire team that is able to complete the raid first in the world, every member of that fire team is going to be getting the 1000 Voices Exotic Fusion Rifle to drop. Which is kind of insane. We, I don't think we've ever had anything like that where the raid exotic, the special exotic tied to the in-game raid is going to be a guaranteed drop for everybody who can complete it first in the world. Really awesome incentive there for fire teams to get into the race and see if they can complete it first. Now, the 1000 Voices on its own is a really interesting fusion rifle. It comes with the ability Amkara's Eye, where charging this weapon unleashes a giant continuous beam of death. It's also got the special trait, Unforeseen Repercussions, where this weapon's beam superheats its targets upon impact, causing delayed explosions. Yes, this is the fusion rifle you got to see where you can kind of draw out symbols and shapes and then they'll later on detonate for massive damage. It's a really interesting weapon that we've seen some gameplay of in previous trailers and whatnot, and it's really cool that basically everybody who gets World First is going to be getting their hands on this weapon guaranteed. It'd be like if every Guardian on the World's First team for Vault of Glass got their hands on the Vex Mythoclast. And again, is definitely a great incentive for those teams out there to stick it out. By the way, this isn't the only reward that those of you who clear the raid in a timely manner are going to be getting. In addition to the extra rewards for the world's first team, any player who beats the raid within the first 24 hours will receive the exclusive Wish Ascended Emblem. And we get a great look at it here. It's a really cool looking emblem and will serve as a nice extra prize for any guardians who can complete the raid within the first day. But that's not all. Any player who beats the last wish before 10 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday, September 18th, 2018 will have access to a personalized last wish raid jacket available for purchase through the Bungie Rewards program. That's right, you're going to get some exclusive real life merch and any players who would like to participate in this offer will need to make sure that they complete the raid, claim the in-game triumph, and then claim the code on the Bungie Rewards page before the weekly reset. It will basically be the same process that you might have taken last week if you took advantage of the Forsaken soundtrack, getting that free on the Bungie Rewards program. And I have to say, this is absolutely crazy. It's like the Moments of Triumph t-shirt that you can get for completing that. Any team that is able to complete the last wish before next Tuesday, September 18th, 2018, is going to have access to this jacket. It'll come with a last wish tag, some emblems, and your own player name emblazoned on the side. Definitely an awesome reward for those guardians out there who are able to clear the raid before Tuesday's reset. I've got to say, Bungie's really kind of pulling out all the stops for incentivizing people to try and get that world's first title this time around. I personally wasn't that interested in going for World's First. I was going to take things nice and slow, even though I'm above 530. But now I might just have to squeeze out all the extra bits of power I can get in order to see if I can get this done before next Tuesday so that I can secure one of these jackets. Really interesting overall move by Bungie. But maybe you're a Guardian out there who's not that interested in raid stuff. Maybe you're more of a PvP type Guardian. Well, no worries, we've got stuff for you too, because next week, starting on Tuesday, September 18th, and going until Tuesday, September 25th, the Iron Banner is returning. That's right, this is going to be the first Iron Banner of Destiny 2 Year 2, Season 4. And of course, it's going to be a very different Iron Banner this time around. We've already got the change to the Sandbox in PvP. 
Destiny 2 Crucible is a lot different now than it was a month or so ago. And the Iron Banner event itself is also going to be seeing, of course, some big changes. First and foremost, you are now in an arms race with the Guardians you face off against, so make sure you equip your most powerful gear because power matters in Iron Banner once again. Higher Light Guardians are going to have a distinct advantage against Lower Light Guardians, just like the Iron Banner had back in Destiny 1. But that's not all. Enabling power advantages is not the only change coming to Iron Banner. Lord Saladin will present seven weekly bounties for you to complete. Each bounty rewards you with an Iron Banner themed reward, and two of these bounties in particular grant powerful rewards. There are no exceptions. All Iron Banner themed weapons and armor have the chance to be rewarded when bounties are completed. Additionally, of course, the original Iron Lord will also be offering armor for direct purchase, as well as two weapons with unique rolls per event. You can gain access to purchase these items by completing their associated bounties. And then we get this awesome screen of what the new Iron Banner vendor screen is going to look like. Of course, Lord Saladin is returning. We've got the new bounties as well as the new weapons and armor that you'll be able to purchase throughout the course of the event. Now, I've got to say, I'm loving these changes. I'm really excited for Iron Banner this time around because I've really been enjoying the Crucible for the past couple of weeks. I think this tournament's going to be great. I'm glad that these bounties, at least a few of them, are going to be dropping powerful gear. I kind of wish all seven were dropping powerful gear. But as usual, we've got a lot of new stuff to look forward to within the Iron Banner this time around. Now they go on to say that if you've got tokens left over from Season 3, these may be redeemed in Season 4 for reputation packages. As with bounties, all Iron Banner themed weapons and armor may be earned through reputation packages from Lord Saladin. And finally, to wrap up rewards, post-match drops are also returning to Iron Banner. Both Crucible and Iron Banner rewards will drop at match completion. There's no word on whether or not those drops will be power level appropriate. I would venture to say that's probably not going to be the case given the way normal Crucible works. But we get some great looks at the new Iron Banner armor set as well as a few of the new Iron Banner weapons, including the new Iron Banner grenade launcher as well as what looks to be an Iron Banner scout rifle. The new set looks pretty good. It's got kind of a rusted out theme to it. And I know personally I can't wait to get my hands on some of this stuff. For me, it feels good to actually want to run through the Iron Banner once again. Alright, moving on from there, we have a section within the TWAB that's basically dedicated to the many artists who have contributed to Destiny 2 Forsaken. There's no real news in this section, but I really wanted to bring to attention the work that some of the artists there working at Bungie have done. And we get some great concept art pieces from all kinds of things, from the Dreaming City to Cade 6 and its battle-worn head. The visual design in Destiny 2 Forsaken is absolutely fantastic. And they leave links to the art station pages for a lot of these artists within the TWAB. I would definitely recommend that you go in, you check out some of their other work, because they did great stuff when it comes to detail. And finally, next week we're going to be getting yet another hotfix in Hotfix 2.0.3. We get a very short preview on some of the issues being addressed. First up, they're fixing an issue that impacted weapon recoil on PC. They fixed an issue where the Traveler's Chosen sidearm had no dismantle or vault functionality. You were just kind of stuck with it. And also, the Traveler's Chosen will appear as the damaged version in the character inventory once this change is live. They're fixing an issue where daily clan bounties were not rotating properly each day. And finally, in Hotfix 2.0.3, players may be given the option to reconnect to competitive matches when encountering errors that remove them to the login screen. Those are just a few of the big changes that'll be dropping in Hotfix 2.0.3 next week. Alright Guardians, that's pretty much it for the biggest bits of news within this week's issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog, This Week at Bungie. Again, it's almost all about the raid going live tomorrow. Make sure you're staying tuned to the Twitch channels, the YouTube channels, and all that kind of stuff, because everybody's going to be trying to get that world first, to get their hands on the 1,000 voices, those exclusive emblems, and of course, that exclusive jacket. It's going to be a really interesting day tomorrow, so make sure you're staying tuned right here to the channel where we will be having guide videos and coverage coming up covering the Last Wish raid, the bosses, of course the mechanics and all that kind of stuff to help you get your raid completion done before next Tuesday as well. But alright Guardians, that is going to be it for this one. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you Guardians are raid ready coming tomorrow. It's going to be a really interesting ride. But I'm out for now. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff we're putting out. But this is it for me. As always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.